Welcome to the Crossroads Exhibit at the Milwaukee Public Museum. Today, we're answering questions about ancient civilizations submitted by MPM members. Laszlo asked, were only pharaohs mummified? Initially, in ancient Egypt, mummification first probably began with the pharaohs, then included members of the nobility, priests, and other officials. As beliefs evolved and the practice of mummification changed over time, other people were also mummified. But the process was not the same for everyone. This process would be modified based on the person's wealth, status, and ability to pay for the process. Pharaohs were often believed to be the embodiment of gods, mummified and often buried in elaborate tombs while others were mummified for the purpose of transitioning into the afterlife. It also became common practice to mummify animals as votive offerings, food for the deceased and or to accompany their owners into the afterlife. Jeff asked, did Europeans really eat Egyptian mummies as a health fad? The history of consuming body parts of a deceased person unknown to when it first began, continued through to the mid-19th century CE in Europe. Corpse medicine, or medical cannibalism, probably peaked in the 16th through the 17th centuries. In the 1600s, Francis Bacon, an English philosopher and statesman, and Robert Boyle, an Anglo-Irish philosopher and chemist, both who were pioneers of the modern experimental scientific method, were proponents of the healing properties of ground-up mummy powder, or mellified man. Mellified man had been sold for centuries by healers and apothecaries for a variety of ailments. Mummies from Egypt, but also from other sources, were sold, bought, stolen, or smuggled for municipal purposes. The concoctions or powders made from mummies were used by royalty, priests, scientists, many Europeans, and people outside of Europe because of their belief that it had medicinal and healing properties, including a tincture to staunch internal bleeding, epilepsy, toothaches, and skin diseases. They rationalized this practice by convincing themselves that the substances were transformed into something new. Therefore, it was not cannibalism, Another reason people believe this is that mummification involved the use of bitumen, which did have antimicrobial and antibacterial properties, but were not likely present when used in this practice. Michael asked, how do we know what populations of ancient civilizations were? What new research is being done on this topic? Population size is always an estimate. Even today, we cannot know the exact population of nations. Going back to early civilizations like Egypt or Rome makes it even more challenging. Population estimates were initially based on archaeological finds and uncovering ancient towns and cities. The dimensions of a location, number of buildings, cemeteries, artifacts, and agricultural area are good clues. New technologies like ground-penetrating radar map out previously undiscovered communities. Genetic studies using mitochondrial DNA trace our ancestries to further refine what we know. When these different approaches are compared, it's a good way to confirm that the results are authentic. New discoveries happen all the time with the advent of new technology or by asking questions in a different way, which may add to our understanding. The interactive map in the Crossroads exhibits shows how territory of civilizations changed over time. Territories and political boundaries are still in flux today. But it's not just population size that is of interest. Cultures and beliefs are studied as well. Today we can discover people's diets, injuries, diseases, and longevity. The first ever CT scan of an ancient Egyptian mummy was done by the Milwaukee Public Museum in the 1970s. This allows examining ancient people's physical health without harming their remains. That mummy is on display in our Crossroads exhibit. It's a fascinating area of study with lots more to discover. Some of you might want a future 
doing this work yourself.